contra dancing. I went to a small liberal arts college, and there were not many math majors, so the class sizes were very small. I had an upper-level math class called Abstract Algebra. This class started with three students, then one dropped out, so the only students were me and a girl named Amanda. The professor of this class was new to the college and was a bit unconventional. Every Friday, instead of having a regular lecture, we had Fun Friday. This was some sort of game where we had to put what we were learning to practical use. One of the Fun Fridays involved contra dancing. Contra dancing is a type of American folk dancing. It is similar to square dancing, but the dance begins in two long lines with partners across from each other. Before each song, the dancers are taught a sequence of dance moves. Each time through the music, you and your partner are dancing with one other couple. At the end of the sequence, you have switched places with the other couple and dance the next time through with a different couple. The way that the dance moves combine together can be studied using abstract algebra. Our assignment was to write our own contra dance. However, we also did a field trip to attend a real contra dance. We took the professor's car and drove about an hour and a half. The dance was in the social hall of a church. We arrived early so we could participate in the potluck dinner. A potluck dinner is when each person brings a dish to share. We explained to the others that we were there for a math class. They were curious, so we tried to explain how contra dances could be analyzed using abstract algebra. I will include a brief explanation at the end of this video for those interested. I was excited for the dance, but also a bit nervous. Contra dancing requires focus so that you remember the moves and do not mess up. If one person makes a mistake, then it can throw off the whole group. I had spent a lot of time researching and preparing so that I wouldn't embarrass myself. There were a few other young couples, but most of the other dancers were old. Amanda wanted to be my partner for every dance because she wasn't comfortable dancing with a stranger. The dance started with a brief tutorial so first-timers could practice. After the tutorial, the first song began. Contra dances are led by a man or woman called a caller. Our caller was a man who taught the dances and called out each move throughout the song to keep everyone on track. The music for contra dancing is a style of American folk music. Our music was played by a live band featuring a fiddle, the name for a violin played in a country or folk style, a guitar, and a keyboard. Of course, I made some minor mistakes at the beginning, but as the night went on, I got better and really enjoyed myself. I don't remember the exact number of songs, but the night followed this general pattern. Three contra dances, one waltz, an intermission, three contra dances, and a final waltz. It was late by the time we finished the dance and drove home. I think we all enjoyed the new experience. I stayed interested in contra dancing and watched many videos online. Some places hold contra dances in a nightclub setting with loud dance music in a dark room with flashing lights. I always wanted to attend that kind of dance, but unfortunately I have never attended another contra dance. If I ever have the opportunity, I would like to go to another one. Now here is my explanation of how abstract algebra can be used to analyze a contra dance. First of all, algebra is simple mathematics that involves adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. In our early school years, we learned to do these operations using numbers. We learned that 2 plus 2 equals 4, and 6 divided by 2 equals 3. Abstract algebra means understanding these operations without using specific numbers, doing proofs to see what facts hold true in general. For each time through the music in a contra dance, each couple is dancing with one other couple, so we have four people total. We can represent this using a square of paper, where each corner of the paper represents one person. Think about what actions we could do to that square to have the corners change places. We could rotate the square clockwise one, two, or three positions. We could flip the paper over the vertical axis. We could also flip it over the horizontal axis. Finally, we can flip it over either of the two diagonal axes. Now, some sequences of operations are equal to other operations. For a simple example, rotating the square clockwise two positions, then rotating it again two more positions, leaves us in the original starting position. 
If we flip the square over the horizontal axis, then rotate it two positions, then flip it over the vertical axis, we are also back at our starting position. We can add all the moves of the dance together to see what the final position will be. Our goal for a contra dance is to have the two couples switch positions, which is equivalent to flipping the paper over the vertical axis. When we wrote our contra dances for the class, we had to come up with a sequence of moves that had this result and prove it mathematically. I think having fun Fridays was a good way to understand the practical applications of the math we were learning. Attending the contra dance also helped us to get outside our comfort zones and have a new experience. Did you ever have a class that had fun activities or field trips? Write your answer in the comments below and please subscribe for more English listening practice. This is David B. Thanks for listening.